This is going to be my first time taking a look at this laptop. Let's go ahead and get the sticker cut. I don't cut the box too. This is the inside of the box. It's very sparse from the looks, which I actually prefer, less waste. Looks like we've got the power brick here, laptop, and that's pretty much all she wrote. Let's get her out of the box. Occasionally you'll get uh, stickers in a box, usually for like graphics cards and CPUs, but sometimes you get them for laptops too. These are actually really neat, like the 404 Limit Not Found. I really like that. There's like gigabyte ones. Really neat. Whoever came up with the idea of putting a bunch of stickers in the box, you wouldn't think it, but it's actually a, a nice little touch if you like that sort of thing. I do. Inside the box, we get our laptop and a 150 watt barrel style power brick. For the laptop, let's go over connectivity. We've got power, RJ45, HDMI 2.1, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, and this is USB 4 with power delivery 3.0 and display port 1.4. This is really nice to see. On the opposing side, we've got another USB 3.2 Gen 1. This is USB 2.0, and then we've got our 3.5 millimeter uh, combo headphone jack. Uh, we've got indicator lights right here, but it's not currently on, and nothing on the back besides vents. Involving the chassis, the front and back have a metal finish, which I really like. It adds a bit more high quality feel to it. Let's take a look on the inside and see what we've got to work with. Okay, we've got Windows updates completed. We've got games installed. Let's go over system specs real fast. We've got the AMD Ryzen AI7 350 with the Radeon 860M integrated graphics. This is four performance cores, four efficiency cores, and those are hyper-threaded. This is more of an efficient chip, but it's more than enough to handle an RTX 5060. Let's go down to memory. We've got two 16 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 RAM that is upgradable to 64. So that means none, neither one of these modules are soldered on, so you can replace them as needed. That is a win. I hope other manufacturers go back to the old style. We do not want soldered on memory. Involving disk, we've got a one terabyte NVMe SSD for the primary. There are two M2 slots. For the primary, it's uh, up to PCI Express 4.0 X4, and that is up to four terabytes of SSD capacity. And for the secondary, it is 4.0 X2, also up to four, uh, four terabytes as well. Let's go down to Wi-Fi. We've got the Realtek 8852CE Wi-Fi 6E adapter. I did have some initial configuration issues with the original drivers installed on this. It was wanting to stick to 2.4 gigahertz on channel six. It was not wanting to go up to five gigahertz correctly. I ended up uh, adding my um, ethernet adapter and going the physical route, letting it do its updates. And then my Wi-Fi worked correctly after getting those driver updates. So if you have that issue, just do that instead. We've got our integrated graphics, and then we've got our dedicated RTX 5060 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. This comes with Windows 11 Home. So if you need professional or enterprise, you will have to upgrade you know, on your own with that. Now, I've only installed a couple games, and I kind of just want to point out the limitations of only have a terabyte of storage. You might want to upgrade uh, your secondary storage and get a little bit more going on there because it's really easy to burn through a terabyte. It doesn't really take much anymore, especially with games, you know, consistently taking 100 or more gigabytes per game. So involving the like physical keyboard itself, it's soft touch, the touchpad surprisingly good, no complaints. And this is coming from someone who has a MacBook Pro. So, and yeah, it's, it's as good, you know, I have no complaints. Keyboard, is your typical keyboard. It's not bad, it's not great, it just you know does its job. My only complaint uh, that I have with this keyboard, and just what time is dinner later this evening. Now, thankfully I didn't have any typos there. The issue that I do not like about this keyboard is there's a lot of flex going on, especially in the center. So you can feel the keyboard move as you're typing on it. Now, it's not affected me involving my efficiency, but it has been noticeable. The, the easy fix for Gigabyte for this is just to put a metal backplate underneath this and the problem goes away. I think the overall build quality is excellent. So no complaints. If that's the only thing that I've got to complain over really, it's not really much of a complaint to begin with. So, you know, maybe a fix for future iterations for Gigabyte. Let's get on to 
gaming. So I've got the Elder Scrolls Oblivion Remastered. We've got Cyberpunk 2077, The Last of Us, Baldur's Gate 3. I was going to use FrameView, but I didn't really like it. I'm going to switch to using uh, CapFrameX for showing all the details with the graphics card, the CPU info. You're testing my patience, pig. Stand aside, prisoner. Close up left. Protect the Emperor. Protect you. The captain's down. <laughs> You're lucky I'm that nut. You're lucky I like you. Otherwise, you'd be dead already. Are you all right, sire? Don't worry, sire. We will get you out of here. They won't be the first to underestimate the blades. I'll take point. Let's move. You stay here, pr
So the 5060 is a very powerful card. When you add in DLSS and FrameGen, there's a lot this graphics card can do. But even so, it does have its limitations. And when it comes to video memory, there are AAA titles that will push way past 8 gigabytes, usually between 9 to 10. And that is the case for The Last of Us. So I kind of wanted to go through the settings a little bit here and just kind of show off like if you run into a situation like this where VRAM is the issue, you're going to have to turn down settings in order to get it to function correctly. You're going to get frame drops. You're going to get stuttering, all kinds of nasty stuff. So make sure you're using less VRAM. Unfortunately, there's no way around this. You just got to drop the settings or you have to get a graphics card with more video memory. Simple as that. There's his phone. This wraps up my review of the Gigabyte X16. Its MSRP is around $1,600, but you can find it on sale for about a grand, so keep an eye out. It's definitely a laptop I'd be interested in on sale, a little bit less so at its uh, MSRP value. As long as you understand its limitations with the 8 gigabyte VRAM limitations, it's a pretty well all-rounder that'll fit most people's needs.